Welcome to the course Defining Template Components and Constraints for Rail. In this exercise, you will create a single sub ballast layer and define parametric controls so the width and the depth of the slab can be dynamically controlled with parametric constraints during modeling. Templates represent the typical cross-sectional geometry. Templates consist of points and open and closed shapes called components. Points can be null or standalone points, but most points are part of components. They are what components are made of. Rules are used to represent the engineering relationships between points. For example, an edge of pavement is typically constrained to a centre line by a width and a slope. Templates can be extruded along any 3D line string using the Apply Linear Template tool. For example, a curb template can be applied around a traffic island, a slope treatment can be extruded along a road corridor, hinge point, a pavement line, curb and slope treatment can be extruded along a pavement saw cut line. Corridors are dramatically more powerful. You can drop multiple templates along a corridor and control how to transition them Consider a corridor that starts without a curb and gutter but later needs them. A single corridor can have multiple cross-sectional geometries and behaviour. Template points can be controlled by independent geometry and many more aspects of a template can be customised along a corridor. There are multiple corridor courses teaching these capabilities. So first of all we're going to start by opening the software selecting the workspace and selecting the work set and then open an existing DGN file. So here I've started up OpenRail Designer Connect Edition and I'm going to set the workspace to the delivered workspace which is called Training and Examples and the work set is going to be Training Metric. I'm then going to hit the Browse button and browse to our dataset folder, which will be defining template components and constraints. And I'm going to select the file metric templates.dgn and just open the software. Our DGN file is now open. And right in the top left hand corner of the DGN, we're going to set the workflow to open rail modeling and from the ribbon structure we're going to select corridors and then we're going to go to the create option and go to template create template and this will open up uh, the delivered template library again delivered means this is the one that we give you with the software but we want to open up a specific template library that's related to this project. So on the Create Template window, I'm going to go to File, Open. And from my dataset folder, I'm going to select the Project Template ITL and open that file. So what you will see now is our typical template or Create Template view window where we've got our template folder structure, our preview area, and the current template that can be edited. The first thing we're going to do is to create a component. And a component is a set of points that define an open or closed shape. Each component, whether open or closed, can represent a different material or area of interest. The component has a feature definition to define its symbology and provide information modeling capabilities. A simple component, like the one we're about to create in this exercise, is a closed parallelogram, defined by a slope, a thickness, and a width. 
and it's excellent for representing single individual components. So, first of all, under the components folder, as so we're going to expand, I'm just going to go right click and select new template. And this template, I'm going to give it a name and we're going to call it sub ballast layer. Now, first thing you'll notice, there is nothing in the template window. So we need to create a component in here. But first of all, I'm going to select the dynamic settings window. And the dynamic settings window has multiple functions, one of which it allows us to step or snap to the grid by setting the step. So in here, I'm just going to set the step to 0.1 for both X and Y. I'm going to put the point name here on hinge. It's just a generic name, nothing specific. So I could pick it from the list. If it's not in the list, I can just type it in. So here I'm going to select the feature definition. So I'm just going to go to template points, rail, use the slider across and select TL rail sub ballast for the feature definition. In the create template window, I'm going to right click and select add new component. Now there are uh, seven different types of components that you can generate. We're going to do a simple. And you can see you've got that simple component on the end of your cursor. Down in the bottom left hand corner, we're going to give this component a name. We're going to call it sub ballast. The feature definition for this is we're going to go to the Mesh, Rail, scroll across, and again pick TC Rail Sub Ballast. The slope we're going to give to this, we're going to give it minus 3.33%. The depth is 0 0.15 meters, and the width is going to be 2.6 meters. You can now window into the origin point of the template, which is at the grid line 00, zero and you can place the hinge point at 0, 0, and just hit the left mouse button. Here is the fit view button and just go file and save that template. We're now going to edit the sub ballast layer. And we're just going to double click on this point here that says hinge two. You can see that it has two parent points, so it is fully constrained. The constraint one we're going to change this to a slope. We're also going to change its parent point. So I'm just going to use the selector and I'm going to pick this hinge point, which is hinge point three. And I'm going to leave the slope the same. I'm just going to go apply on that. Constraint two, again, I'm going to change it to slope. Now, because I've picked the same type of constraint, I obviously can't have the same parent point. But the parent point is hinge one, and the slope here is going to be minus 
percent and again hit apply and close and hit fit view so we've just altered the slope of that line so again i'm just going to go file and save the next step is to assign useful properties to the points that means give them some useful names names that people will represent and recognize for the particular point so i'm going to double click on the point at the origin which is the hinge point and right at the top here i'm going to select from the point name list if i scroll down rail sub ballast and just hit apply right i'm now going to use the target selector and i'm going to pick the point below the origin point and again i'm going to change its name And again from the list, I'm going to pick rail sub ballast. But I'm going to add the wording underscore B O T for bottom. And again hit apply. Again use the target selector and pick hinge point one. And this time again I'm going to pick the rail sub ballast point name and again I'm going to add the underscore SHDR for shoulder go apply again hit the target selector select hinge 2 again for the name hit the pull down select again rail sub ballast Add the word underscore S H D R space B O T for bot and go apply and close and then again file save. Let's just review the constraints on this template points. So where it's got display, you can see how the components or how the points within the components are constrained let's go back to the display of the components the last thing we're going to do in this particular section is add some parametric labels and these work like a variable definition so that the value of the label constraints can be changed in the template itself or it can be changed within the corridor and these names can be anything that the user wishes to place on them, but typically give them a value that is recognizable. So the first one we're going to select is the rail sub ballast shoulder. Just double click on it. We're going to type in a label called sub ballast slope. And just apply on that for the horizontal constraint we're going to select sub ballast width and again hit apply and close we're now going to select the rail ballast shoulder bot point and for the constraint label for constraint one, select for the label sub ballast slope. You don't have to pick it this time because it is already there. I'm not going to give that one because it's a different type of slope. And again, just apply and close. Then save the template library. And that completes exercise one. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. 
If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.